ජීවිතේ වැඩිපුර ලැබෙන හොඳම දේවල් දෙන්න දැන් SLT Broadband වෙති 75% දක්වා වැඩිපුර ඩේටා සතුට ජනවාරි 15 වෙනිදා සිට ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකොම් making headlines on first at 9 change rules UMP parliamentarians in much talked about cabinet reshuffle prime minister gets law and order portfolio who is responsible SLFP General Secretary Dumindri Sanayake says he is ready to take responsibility for election results. Demonstrations in London. Sri Lankan community engage in protest against brigadiers recall. There are no war crimes in Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan army is the disciplined army. Economic plans. Technical group meeting of G24 countries to meet in Colombo. Dominating the visitors, New Zealand beat England by three wickets in the first One Day International. A very good evening. This is First at Nine on Adha Dharana. I'm Katharina Chang. Now on to your top story tonight. The first phase of the much talked about cabinet reshuffle got underway this morning. It was focused on UMP ministerial positions of the national government. President Maithripala Sirisena meanwhile said the second phase of the cabinet reshuffle focusing on UPF ministers will be carried out within the next 2 weeks. During today's cabinet reshuffling, six new cabinet ministers, three state ministers and one deputy minister were sworn in before the president. The reshuffling of several ministerial positions of the national government took place at the presidential secretariat today. Majority of ministers and parliamentarians participated in the event which commenced at 11:30 this morning. Accordingly, Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe was sworn in as the new cabinet minister of law and order. The premier also holds responsibility as the minister of national policies and economic affairs. Meanwhile Dr Harsha De Silva who held the deputy ministerial position of the National Policies and Economic Affairs is now been appointed as the State Minister of National Policies and Economic Affairs. Sagla Ratnayake who held the ministerial position for Law and Order has now been appointed as the Cabinet Minister of Youth Affairs and Southern Development. However changes have not been made to his responsibility as the Minister of Southern Development. Meanwhile PSC Nagamage was sworn in as the new state minister for both ministerial portfolios that are under the purview of Minister Sagala Ratnayake. Accordingly PSC Nagamage has been appointed as the new state minister of youth affairs and southern development. Meanwhile ministerial position held by Minister Lakshman Kiriyalla and Kabir Hashim have been swapped during the cabinet reshuffle today. As a result Lakshman Kiriyalla was sworn in as the new cabinet minister of state enterprise and candy development. Kabir Hashim has now been appointed as the new cabinet minister of higher education and highways. Meanwhile Harin Fernando was sworn in as the new cabinet minister of digital infrastructure and foreign employment. The ministerial portfolio of foreign employment was previously held by Minister Talata Atukurala. It is noteworthy to highlight that cabinet ministerial positions of sustainable development and wildlife held by Gamini Jay Vikram Perera has now come under the purview of Ravindra Samaravira. Meanwhile Ajit P Perera has been appointed as the new state minister of prisons and rehabilitation. He previously held the position as the deputy minister of power and renewable energy. JC Alavatuvala who was a parliamentarian representing the UNP filled the deputy ministerial position of home affairs which was vacated last year when Nimal Lansa resigned from his ministerial portfolio accordingly the number of cabinet ministers including the president and prime minister now amounts to 47 24 state ministers and 21 deputy ministers represent the current government although there is no change in the number of ministerial positions the number of ministers increased by one with the additional appointment of deputy minister jc alavatuvala 
Meanwhile, President Maitripala Sirisena says that the reorganizing of different ministerial subject areas must be done to provide better service for the public. Addressing ministers and parliamentarians gathered for the cabinet reshuffle today, the president went on to say that he listened to the message given by the public at the local authorities election. <laughs> As per the people's message to us during the local authorities' election, there is a need to reorganize state activities, correct our mistakes and weaknesses, expedite what we delayed. There should also be political reforms, changes in state policies and activities. The main priority of our political principles lie with the people and the country. All of us accept that we should expedite state activities for the benefit of the public. Ministers as well as parliamentarians from both the UMP and the UPFA expressed their views to the media following the cabinet reshuffle today. The government has produced a comedy drama here. I don't know whether the public will laugh, cry or throw stones at this. No, I'm not disappointed. I just don't think the change that the public was expecting happened here. That change will take place whether you like it or not. Law and order. Prime Minister got the ministerial position of law and order. Many political parties use the method of using someone only to throw them away later. I've faced the same thing many times but the public is always with me. I like to catch thieves. I worked in foreign affairs before joining the political arena. I would also like a deputy ministerial position in cultural heritage or law and order ministries. What we see is that there is no need for comprehensive changes since the current government is only going to be there for another two years. As per recommendations by the Prime Minister, I was sworn in as a Deputy Minister of Home Affairs before the President. We will be able to see all the changes people have asked for. I expect to succeed in this new challenge. There isn't much of a change here, but we can continue with our work. Meanwhile, UNP parliamentarians who did not participate in the cabinet reshuffle today also expressed their views to the media later in the day. I think it's better if they didn't do this at all because this is a joke. They should do something which would realize expectations of the public. There is no point in hiding anything. I spoke with the General Secretary late last night as well. No chance has been given to Putlam. We do our utmost to secure a win for UNP in Putlam, Polonnaru and Mathale during every election. Those who think there are only donkeys in the Putlam district will not give us a chance. Meanwhile, UPFA ministers and parliamentarians also expressed their views after the cabinet reshuffle this morning. The president said that the cabinet reshuffle from our side will take place within the next two weeks. The cabinet reshuffle clearly shows that the government of good governance will continue. Without talking to all these media stations, they could directly talk about what went wrong during the election at the Central Working Committee. I wasn't the one to carry on operations related to this election campaign. There were several committees to look into that. There were Ministers Anurayapa and Thilanga Sumatipala in the media committee. Then it was Minister Susil Premajanta who was at the main operations committee. I was in Anuradhapura while General Secretary of the UPFA was in Hambantota. I would accept the responsibility of anything that went wrong as a General Secretary, but all the committee heads must take responsibility for their part in this as well. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha claims that nothing significant has taken place in today's cabinet reshuffle. The former president made this comment speaking to media in Kandy today. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha visited the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic in Kandy this morning and also met with the chief prelate of the Malvata chapter, Most Venerable Tibatuave Sri Sumangala Thera. <laughs> It is just like switching cards here and there. They do not know how to do it. It does not allow anyone to establish power and it was prepared by collecting pieces from here and there. The electoral system in itself is flawed. After coming into power, all the government did was focus on vengeance and taking loans. 
We request parliamentarians to dissolve the government if they cannot continue this. The former president then visited the chief prelate of the Asgiri chapter, Most Venerable Varakagodanyana Ratana Thera. The former head of state also visited the Gatambe Rajopavana Rama temple. Brigadier was recalled from the UK. What are they trying to do by bringing him down to Sri Lanka? They will not punish him even though they recalled him. But bringing him down is an unfair move. The Sri Lankan community living in the United Kingdom engaged in a protest opposite the Westminster Parliamentary Complex yesterday in protest of the Tamil diaspora and the recalling of Minister Council of Defence attached to the Sri Lanka High Commission in London, Brigadier Priyanka Fernando. Sri Lankans in several European countries were seen engaged in the protest. Brigadier Priyanka Fernando was recalled to Sri Lanka following a recent video which went viral on social media depicting Brigadier Priyanka Fernando making certain gestures towards LTTE sympathisers who were protesting outside the Sri Lankan High Commission in London. Although the Ministry of Foreign Affairs immediately released a statement citing the Brigadier's removal from duties, President Maitri Pala Sirisena, however, revoked the move and reinstated him. Meanwhile, responding to journalists yesterday, Army Commander Lieutenant General Mahesh Senanayaka said that the move was in fact made to certify the security of Brigadier Fernando. In the meantime, the Sri Lankan community residing in the UK engaged in a protest in front of the Westminster Parliamentary Complex yesterday in protest of recalling Brigadier Priyanka Fernando and the actions by the Tamil diaspora. In Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan army is the disciplined army. They claimed that all Sri Lankans living overseas should unite against the injustice being carried out against war heroes. Sri Lankans living in other European countries supported the protest organized by the organization Patriotic Sri Lankans in the UK. LTT diaspora is massively active in Europe, especially in the UK, and it's affecting our motherland in an enormous way. We Sri Lankans have to understand that in order to let our country free from the Tamil diaspora, we should unite. Meanwhile, an intense situation arose during the protest when LTTE sympathizers residing in the UK waved Elam flags. Assistant, Assistant Secretary of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Navin Dizoiza, says that the GMOA, Saitam Parents Association, and the State Medical Faculty Students' Parents Union request the President to convene a meeting with relevant parties in order to finalize the proposed solution put forth by the President earlier this week pertaining to the Saitam issue. The request comes following President Maitri Pala Sirisena's decision to transfer students of Saitam to the Medical Faculty of Sir John Kotalawala Defence University. The Government Medical Officers Association, Saitam Parents Association and the State Medical Faculty Students Parents Union convened a media briefing today. So we strongly protest against the people who are trying to sabotage this solution. So because of that, the parents and the GMA is asking from the president to make a meeting with the, all the relevant parties and conclude the solution and advise to the Attorney General's department and the other authorities to take necessary steps to uh, make a success about this solution. I think the president will call for the, all the parties in next week. So we hope at that meeting, we and the, all the parties can give their solutions and the, what are the time frames to make this success. Otherwise, the Saitam people also suffering and the country also suffering. Let's now take a look at few other stories making news across Sri Lanka. Three retail outlets in the area of Makumura in Kuttava were entirely destroyed due to a fire that erupted in one of the outlets. The incident took place this afternoon. The Navy has discovered a stock of gold worth nearly 50 million rupees in a boat in Kandakkulia Kalpitiya yesterday. Two suspects have been arrested along with gold weighing approximately 7.2 kilograms. The suspects have been handed over to the Fort Preventive Office via Sinnapadu substation. Villagers belonging to the Galevila Divisional Secretariat have been severely affected by a water scarcity due to the prevailing dry weather condition. About 300 families living in the villages of Siamalagahavela, Bakmigasiaya, Thalakolayaya, Kuretia and Vahakoti as well as Galevila are experiencing a severe water scarcity due to the recent dry weather condition. 
Residents of these areas, however, complain that it is regrettable that none of the officials of the Mathale district or the Disaster Management Centre have been able to provide a solution to this water problem. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. Welcome back to the news. Now, the two-day technical group meeting of the G24 countries will be held this Tuesday at the BMICH in Colombo. Over 45 delegates representing finance ministries and central banks of member countries will participate at this two-day event. The G24 group, which is officially called the Intergovernmental Group of 24 on Monetary, International Monetary Affairs and Development, receives the Secretariat services from the IMF. And the event in Colombo is headed by Minister of Finance and Mass Media, Mangala Samravira. The 2018 Technical Group meeting covers as its first theme, debt management and sustainability, and the discussions will focus on key debt management and sustainability challenges faced and strategies used by policymakers, both in terms of addressing macroeconomic linkages and improving liability management. The second and related theme will be mobilizing external sources of capital in light of current tightening global and market conditions. This will involve sessions on the road of trade and investment, agreements in boosting investment opportunities and the challenges of managing capital flow volatility with a special session on the potential role of special drawing rights in improving the international monetary system. Speaking at event recently, Minister of Tourism Development and Christian Religious Affairs John Amratunga says that the government is aiming to attract 2.5 million tourist arrivals by the end of this year. According to official data, Sri Lanka recorded 2.1 million tourist arrivals last year, while tourist arrivals in the month of January this year rose 12.6 percent from a year earlier to 246,972. International Tourist Guide Day 2018 was celebrated under the auspices of Minister of Tourism Development and Christian Religious Affairs, John Amaratunga. The event was organized by the Sri Lanka Institute of National Tourist Guide Lecturers in Colombo recently. Last month, we have had a record number of arrivals for the first time in the history of tourism. Arrivals look very promising for the rest of the year. We are aiming least 2.5 million by the end of the year. Therefore, uh, the road led by the National Tourist Guide lecturers in guiding tourists that arrive in this country is extremely important one and that today it is considered tourism is a people-centered industry and highly sensitive quality service that is offered to all the tourists who come to Sri Lanka. I would like to urge the President to encourage more of the female species to come into this at least the strain of being guiding lecturers. CEO of the Colombo Stock Exchange, Rajiva Bandar Naika, says that foreign participation in the stock market has been positive and expects this trend to continue this year as well. Bandar Naika added that the CSC recorded a net foreign inflow of 18 billion rupees last year alone. However, he raised concerns in the decline of domestic investors in the past two years. We have seen this trend continuing even up to this year. We have seen net inflow of about 15 billion rupees and a net inflow of about 6 billion rupees so far for the one and a half months we have seen for this year. Our market prices are relatively cheaper than most markets in the region. So it makes a lot of sense for foreigners to get into this market because they can buy shares at relatively low prices. And that's very attractive because the returns that they can get are far higher. So our price earnings ratio is much less at 10 times compared to some of our uh, regional markets. I think they have confidence in the companies that are listed in the market that there is growth potential of those companies where they can see a price appreciation and they can expect capital gains going forward. We have seen a decline in the domestic investors this year and last year and this is causing some concern. The need of the hour is to really encourage the institutional and the retail investors now also to enter the market. That's a challenge that we have currently. And the second is about giving a wider choice to investors by way of more companies. So we need to attract more companies into the market. Some new blood is also necessary. 
to add to the depth in the market in terms of liquidity. In a bid to encourage participation of small and medium sectors and strengthen foreign participation, Bandar Naik added that CSC is planning to diversify its existing boards. We are hoping to diversify the two boards that we already have, the main board and the, the reserve board. And we felt that there was a need to also service the SME sector. So we are providing a separate board to enable companies in the SME sector to also use the market mechanism. In particular, this is to complement the private equity investors because this can be an exit mechanism for some of the private equity investors that have got into these companies. So they can use the market mechanism to exit that company and other investors can come in and participate in the growth of those SME. Uh, so the market will become a kind of third channel for SME sectors to raise, raise capital. Then the other board that we are proposing to set up is a multi-currency board that is to facilitate companies that are incorporated overseas to come and raise capital via this platform. Of course, that will be restricted to foreign investors and particularly in companies where there can be a dual listing. Now, this multi-currency board can also serve as a conduit for local companies to raise US dollar denominated debt and equity. Market analysts expect foreigners to be more active in the buying market this week. During the week, the All Share Price Index and S&P S20 ended steady as investors picked up diversified shares while turnover stood at 813.6 million rupees and foreign purchases at 16.9 million rupees. Let's now cross over to Dimant Matthew from First Capital with your weekly forecast for the upcoming week. Uh, with the political uncertainty uh, slowly fading off, uh, buying interest in the foreign side is slowly re-entering the market uh, while the locals are active on the retail counters. We expect the market to be slightly volatile uh, this week with the shaky earnings that are being released. Earnings have mixed reaction with selected companies having done well. However, we expect foreigners to be active with uh, improved buying interest, especially in the large blue chip counters. We expect the overall turnover to be moderate while some profit taking is likely to continue in the retail counters. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro announced recently that his government has recovered some billion dollars from the first two days of the sale of the new national cryptocurrency Petro. In the meantime, Venezuelan government has also opened a training center to teach its citizens about cryptocurrencies. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro said that the government recovered a billion dollars from the country's new national cryptocurrency Petro in just two days of trading. He also said that there have been nearly 300,000 offers for purchase. The new currency is a response to the financial sanctions imposed by the United States, which blocks citizens from acquiring new debt from the petrol-producing nation and limits the transfer of money out of Venezuela. In the meantime, Venezuelan government has opened a training centre to teach its citizens about cryptocurrencies just days after the government launched its own version of a virtual coin, the Petro. Cryptocurrency experts had low expectations for the launch of a Venezuelan cryptocurrency given the opacity of Venezuela's management of its public finances and the weakening of its currency. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. On international news, South Korean protesters tried and failed today to block a motorcade carrying North Korean dignitaries to the Pyeongchang Winter Games closing ceremony, accusing the delegation's leader of being behind a deadly 2010 attack on a South Korean warship. North Korean delegation leader Kim Yong-chol, now a ruling party official, was chief of a top North Korean military intelligence agency. He has been blamed for the sinking of the Cheonan, a South Korean Navy corvette which killed 46 sailors. A North Korean delegation led by a controversial general crossed into South Korea for the Winter Olympics closing ceremony in Pyeongchang early this morning. General Kim Yong-chol is blamed for the torpedoing of a South Korean warship in 2010 with the loss of 46 seamen. Families of the victims and South Korean conservative MPs held a protest trying to block his trip at the border. About 2,500 police were deployed at the bridge, but the motorcade took another road. The delegation arrived at a hotel in Seoul before heading to Pyeongchang for the ceremony. The apparent diversion angered protest organizers, who then directed their criticism towards South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who is hosting the North Koreans. 
The opposition Korea Liberty Party accused the Moon administration of abuse of power and an act of treason by rerouting the motorcade to shield it from protesters. Bollywood superstar Sri Devi Kapoor has died of a heart attack at the age of 54. The actress known simply as Sri Devi has been with her family in Dubai for her nephew's wedding. Over five decades, she starred in more than 150 films, including classics like Mr. India, Chandni, Chalbaz and Sadma. She was considered one of the very few Indian female superstars capable of huge box office success without the support of a male hero. From the age of four, she had worked in films in Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kannada and Hindi languages. Crowds gathered outside Sri Devi's home in Mumbai as the news emerged of her death. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted that he was, quote, saddened by the untimely demise of noted actor Sri Devi, unquote. While Indian President Ramnath Kovind said her death had left millions of fans heartbroken. भगवान हर जगह नहीं होता है डीके जी इसलिए तो उसने माँ बनाई है Let's now take a look at some of the emerging stories from across the world Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday hailed the U.S. announcement that it would move its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in May. The United States plans to open a new embassy in Jerusalem in May to coincide with Israel's 70th anniversary. The move, which the U.S. State Department called a historic step, follows President Donald Trump's December 6th decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. At least four persons were injured after a building collapsed in India's western city of Mumbai yesterday. Restoration work in an adjoining room was in progress and as the construction workers broke the supporting wall for renovation purposes, the adjacent building crumbled to pieces. <laughs> Thousands of people protested against Israel's plan to deport African migrants at a rally in Tel Aviv yesterday. At the same time, there was a smaller protest numbering in the dozens who rallied for the deportation of the migrants. Israel began in early February to hand out notices to 20,000 male African migrants, giving them two months to leave the country or risk being thrown in jail. Hundreds of devotees in India's northern Barsana town yesterday ushered in the Festival of Colours as they celebrated the famous Latma Holi, wherein women beat up men with sticks. According to Hindu scriptures, Lord Krishna from Nangaon village paid a visit to his consort Radha's Barsana town on this day and in a playful manner teased her and her friends. The women took offence at Krishna's actions and chased him away with sticks in their hands. And since then, men from Lord Krishna's village visit Barsana to play Latma Holi. Against a background of a string of drawn encounters, the 89th Battle of the Maroons cricket encounter between arch-rivals Ananda and Nalanda Colleges will be played at the SSC ground on March 3rd and 4th. Ananda College started off the season on a promising note but failed to carry on from where they started. While on the other side, Nalanda College started its season on a slow note but got their act together with every match and are in good touch at present. Walk and Vehicle Parade, organized jointly by Ananda and Nalanda Colleges in view of the 89th Battle of the Maroons encounter, began today morning. The Vehicle Parade, which began from Nalanda College, made its way to Ananda College first. Afterwards, students from both schools continued the walk and the Vehicle Parade across Colombo and ended near the Arcade Independence Square. The 89th Battle of the Maroons between Ananda and Nalanda Colleges is scheduled to take place on the 3rd and 4th of March at the SSC grounds. In international cricket, New, New Zealand beat England by three wickets and four balls to spare today in the first of five ODIs being played in New Zealand. New Zealand won the toss and chose to field first. England put on a formidable total of 284 for eight. But a country, a century rather, from Ross Taylor and a calm head at the end by Mitchell Santner gave the Black Caps a series lead of 1-0. 
England's innings, in which Joss Bartlett top scored with 79 of 63 balls, was not one of their dynamic performances, yet a commendable effort on a slow pitch where few batsmen found fluency. New Zealand were impressive at the death, with just 67 coming off the final 10 overs. But 284 for 8 looked formidable when the chase was reduced to 27 for 3 by excellent new ball spells from Wokes, who claimed his 100th ODI wicket. However, a wonderfully absorbing one-day international, which ebbed and flowed throughout, was eventually won by New Zealand as he squeezed home by three wickets with four balls to spare, despite Ben Stokes' intervention on his return to international cricket. Mitchell Santner was the hero at the end, hitting 45 of just 27 balls, including consecutive sixes of Adil Rashid, and finishing the match with another of Chris Wokes, to ensure Ross Taylor's 18th ODI century and a 178-run stand with Tom Latham did not go to waste. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Than 24-7. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures for tomorrow will range between 20 and 31 degrees Celsius with the lowest yet again expected in the Central Hills. Well, looking at the map, a low pressure zone will form from the east of the island and will gradually spread across the island. Well, tomorrow shows no signs of sunny weather as showers and thunder showers are forecasted in the areas of Jaffna, Mana, Waunia and Radhapura coming a bit down Colombo, Kandy, Nigambo, Gaul and Matara. That's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. And before we go, we'd like to take you to the Blue Bay Marine Park in Mauritius. On an island where the lagoon have been badly damaged and heavily fished, Blue Bay is an exception. This little bay, which has been listed as a marine park since 1997, contains superb coral beds and abundant undersea life. We hope you enjoy these visuals. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening. The news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Verena 24-7.